local events we design courses for, typically we'll use what's called classic distance courses. Um, but it's interesting, in uh, the world champs anymore, there is no such thing as classic distance courses. They have, the disciplines are the sprint, the middle, the long, and the relay. And historically, we haven't really designed local event courses with those disciplines in mind. But it's something worth considering when you're putting on a local event. Um, periodically, it's nice to have um, offerings for these disciplines. One, it breaks up the monotony for people. Um, two, we do have people in our club who are on the uh, U.S. team and things, and so it's good practice for them to get some experience running those courses. They don't necessarily have to go to an A event to get experience running in the middle. Um, and it, it can be just fun to run different types of courses. So I think you know, we ought to really encourage our course setters to consider setting some different type courses. I know Rob Wilkinson, I think uh, a few years back, had set a local event up at Hickory Run, for example, where instead of the classic courses for the advanced, he did two middles. And so people that normally run brown would just do one of the middles probably, which is pretty close to a brown course. And red, green, blue people would do two middles, which is pretty close to what their courses amount to also. Um, if the terrain supports it, it you, know, you could do a classic and then a sprint. Or you might do a middle and a sprint, a couple sprints. There's various combinations. Long courses, I think Steve Aronson uh, in the last few years has done um, some long courses for local events. So it's just something to keep in mind, and uh, we wanted to cover that as part of the clinic. As far as the relay goes, relays are a lot of fun. Clem loves relays. It's tough to do them at local events. Sometimes I think the Vice President's Cup or the President's Cup, we've done them. But it's hard to field teams, and from a course setting standpoint, it's a little more involved. So we're not really going to talk about relays today. Uh, this is just a summary sheet out of the IOF uh, rule book which uh, tells you for each of the disciplines what the requirements are. And we'll go through these for each one. So that was just trying to get the table there where it kind of summarizes everything on one page. So first, sprint. Um, the one difference on sprint courses is the map scale. Usually our maps are 1 to 10,000 or 1 to 15. And for sprints, you want to blow that up to 1 to 4,000 or 1 to 5,000. And uh, Vadim showed you how you can do that in condos pretty easily. The target winning time, it's very short, 12 to 15 minutes. The tendency for people that design sprints is that they make them too long. You know, we had the US team trials up at Lehigh a few years ago, and um, those sprint courses, I think the winning times were, they were like a half an hour or something. You know, maybe not quite that long, but they're, if you set them too long, you're gonna lose the intent of the sprint, which is to run at full speed you know, for the entire duration of the race. And if it's too long, people slow down and it doesn't really have the... When it comes to kind of like the, the physical experience of these different disciplines, like I think of a sprint course that is like a 3K race, a middle course is a 5K, and a, well not that we're talking about classic, but as, as a 10K, and from a physiological point of view, there, there are different things go on at those different lengths. But the, the important thing is that a sprint course should be you know, almost higher intensity than a, a 5K um, cross country race. And I guess the long the analogy there would be maybe a half marathon. So yeah, there you go. That, that's a good way of looking at it. Um, so you know, in order to, get, to be able to run at full speed, you, know, you can't use your typical forested terrain. Usually. So sprints tend to be run things like college campuses, city parks. If they are in wooded areas, usually have a good trail network so people can get run on the trails or very open white woods. You don't want to set sprints in areas with dense vegetation or a lot of climb, which is going to slow people down. The control features you pick should be technically pretty easy, even on a blue or red sprint course, advanced sprint courses. You're probably talking about yellow or at most orange level control difficulty. Uh, it's not your typical advanced, technically uh, tough controls. Um, you still want to have root choice. Uh, and the, the course should be designed to reward careful map reading. Um, there should be frequent changes in direction. Uh, the one thing you've got to be careful of in sprints, and this is something that's been done in the past sometimes, is you know, these maps uh, that we use for sprints um, are usually drawn to little different standards. 
than the normal maps. And sometimes there might be a real intricate little you know, channel or something that somebody could get through that might not be very apparent. And uh, there's things like uncrossable walls and stuff which you might run people into and they get stuck there and can't get out. You gotta be careful with that. You don't wanna trap people. They, ought, they need to be able to read the detail on the map at full speed and not get stuck in dead ends and things easily. It, you just, it's not going to be fun for them if you design it. And one course. other thing, in addition to not having access traps, is that uh, mistakes should not be especially high penalty. So if someone misses a control, it should not be in some vague area where they can't uh, make a correction in you know 10 or 15 seconds. Uh, if it's if he has a 10 to 15 second mistake in a sprint course, is a lot, which you know you would think that that's really silly. But you know, the winning time is 12 minutes, and you have 20 controls. A 10 or 15 second mistake is makes a difference in places. Um, look for opportunities to incorporate spectating. Um, into the course, uh, if you were at NAOC, you know, Sam Reed's courses had a lot of spectating opportunities. It makes it a lot more exciting. It's just fun to watch people run around the sprint course. Um, I mentioned the maps are typically, at least for A events, drawn to a different standard international specification for sprint orienteering maps, ISSOM for short. Um, for local events, it's fine to just blow up the standard map and uh, use that. Uh, you want to consider safety in your course design. Don't take people across dangerous road crossings unless there's marshals or something there to stop traffic. Uh, watch for blind spots. If you have a control, for example, that may be at a corner of a building, you don't want to have two different, different courses approaching from opposite directions and then as people are leaving the control they run into each other. You know, there's been course, sprint courses where people have gotten injured from collisions and things, so keep that in mind. Um, and then. Because we're usually using typically more developed areas, the private property issue can become even more important on sprints, so make sure you mark any out-of-bounds areas clearly. And these were a couple examples. This was uh, Sam's blue course from Mayock last year, and again, you'll see um, you know, he tried to take as much advantage of this, the peak campus as possible, but that area wasn't big enough to fit the whole course. So he did take people into the woods. But he used the open woods and the wooded legs still had trail options, which kept people, you know, they were able to run at full speed still. There's a lot of changes in direction. The uh, spectating area was right here, kind of in the middle of all this, so people were running you know, all through there, which made it very exciting. So just a very good sprint course. The acute angles. Yeah, I think there might have been one or two that got through, that got past. I, just, I mean, I'm just wondering, like, in sprint. Like, I just sprint. Because then it's a different style of course, and you're still supposed to avoid that. I think in all course design, it's good to acute, avoid the acute angles. Um, this might be a little hard to see. This was a world champ uh, sprint final from uh, 2010 in Norway. Uh, and this is pretty typical of what you'll see for uh, world champs for sprint areas. They tend to use city centers and things. Uh, you can see they did have a little bit of a, a wooded or non-urban area, but it's, it's pretty simple. So they you know, didn't have a really uh, technical uh, wooded section. It, it's pretty simple except for the, the five to six to seven, which is an area, you know, maybe a little bit of mild controversy about that, but um, I mean, you'll see that there's some a lot of purple overprinting there, yeah. and that that's going to be an area that puts a big premium on finding small passages and uh, see, doing right a backdoor route. There's really only one way in there. It looks like right here, isn't there? Uh, but I, there's another way out on the right side that I think is a, a pa underground passage. Oh, um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's tough to see. And, and that's something that you'll see in sprint courses, which is maybe a deficiency of, of the ISSOM, that they're trying to show different planes of travel on a, an orienteering map. And so passages is probably a weakness of, of the mapping standard, but it's kind of hard to, to pick 
three dimensions on a sheet of paper. And then this is a, another example. This uh, is a good route choice, long, long legs. So it's still good on sprints to include different length legs and a little bit of you know, some longer legs with good route choice. The one thing, I, a couple things to point out here is, you see this is the, the start, this is the first leg of the course, which I think is not good. It's because people, again, haven't had time to plan ahead. Um, to hit them with that leg right out of the start, to me, that's, that's not great. Uh, another thing to point out is this 45 degree notion still applies on sprints. You can see, look at you know, all of the roads and things you're crossing. They're all, that's almost exactly a 45 degree angle. And that's by design. That's what good course setters will do, which greatly improves and uh, enriches the route choice options. Middle distance. So the map scale for that is usually 1 to 10,000. Occasionally you'll see it 1 to 15, but that's rare. Um, target winning time is 30 to 35 minutes. Um, so this is, in terms of the length of the courses, you're probably talking about maybe 60% of the length of our typical classic courses, I would think. Uh, you want to aim for detailed map reading, requiring a high degree of concentration throughout. And the middle distance uh, discipline, it's all about technicality. And you want to make the courses as technically difficult as possible. Uh, so they're best suited to train. that features a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of technical uh, features and things like that. Um, it's, you don't want to try to set a middle ideally in a really bland area. You want to have a lot of uh, point features and things to work with. Um, and even though it is technical, you still want people to be able to run the course at a high speed. Um, but it's okay to have some areas where they're going to have to go slower and pick their way through vegetation and things. But uh, it still should be run at pretty decent speed. Um, variety is important. Try to get as much as you can into the course using terrain type, uh, vegetation, different navigational technique, directional changes. Um, some route choices is good to offer, but it's not uh, featured as prominently in the middle as it is in the long. The long is really the one that's where route choice comes into play the most. So uh, for variety, it's good to have some route choice there. Uh, it's good to have some longer legs, but you're probably not going to see a one kilometer long leg on the middle course. It's, it, would, it would take up too much of the course. Um, the leg lengths on the middle courses tend to be shorter than on a long distance course um, and kind of lends itself to control picking in, in some areas. This was Clem's uh, red uh, middle course from Adams Creek. And uh, you can see the beginning of the course here. There's a lot of vegetation detail which he used. And uh, to navigate through that, people had to kind of weave through the different openings in the vegetation and things. Um, some control picking in here. And uh, we've got a lot of variety because there's you know, some more open areas, some rock detail in, in areas, other areas vegetation detail. Um, down here, he took people through the uh, finish area, which offered some good spectating opportunities. This is kind of uh, a middle on steroids, I guess. This was from <laughs> France, the world champs, uh, in 2011. And this terrain, I mean, that's, you, when you look at that terrain, it just screams middle, because it's so detailed and so technical. Um, personally, I don't think I would have wanted to have run that course, but you were over there, right, Clint? Uh, yes, it was pretty amazing. Um, it was very intense. And. Uh, you know, I was doing the spectator races then. This was basically the last day. And the train out there during the course of the week started out impossible. And then it actually finished up with this, which was actually kind of remarkable in that you could run. Um, so it actually was very open forest. Um, and people made all sorts of mistakes. The world champion runners made all sorts of mistakes here. But I think it's an area that if you run there on just one second occasion, you'll do a lot better. But the first time a lot of people got there, they, their minds were blown. Uh, a couple things to point out here. You'll see and yeah, there are a couple longer legs um, for variety. There's this control picking section in here. 
and here at the end they brought people through the arena for spectating to finish up. The spectating piece is becoming more and more important and, and they really like to emphasize that for uh, just uh, making the sport more interesting. But again, in the, in the middle, um, because it really is supposed to be about the technical challenge, um, my thought would be to, you know, if you had to err on one side, err on having more orienteering and less spectating. At NAOC, we almost had to do it the way we did it, um, but, you know, because you only have five or six K to work with, you don't want to be wasting that distance having people run through a field. Yeah, not for a long distance, right. You don't want to water down the course for spectating and um, sacrifice the quality uh, unnecessarily. Um, long distance, the map scale is usually 1 to 15. For local events, most of our maps are 1 to 10. That's fine. Um, the target winning time is 90 to 100 minutes for men, 70 to 80 minutes for women. So that uh, probably is going to translate into courses that might be 30% longer than our typical classic distance courses. Um, they're really meant to be a test of fitness and endurance. So the physicality on a long is going to be more so than certainly on a sprint. Uh, you want to really test people's fitness level. Um, and they really need to feature a lot of wrap choice. And some really super you know, ultra long legs should be incorporated on in a long distance course. Um, and you want those long legs to have a lot of different options uh, for people to consider. They're uh, usually, in terms of the technical aspects, a little less demanding than the middle course. And maybe there's a little more variability, a mix of the easier and, and tougher controls on the long. Um, it's really more about the route choice than the, the technicality. Uh, at a local event, if you're going to do long distance courses for white and yellow, we typically just keep those the same length as normal because they're beginners. You don't want to send them out on an unnecessarily long course and have them get frustrated. Even at the A event for NAOC, for the long day, we kept the white and yellow at the typical length. This was uh, Peter's uh, long red X course from uh, NAOC. And uh, this is a great long leg here. You'll see this in the, when you get the new briar patch. Clem had selected this leg to discuss uh, and analyze, and um, it's a really good long leg. You'll, you'll see at Egypt Mills, the nice thing about it is you've got features like these lakes and ponds, which are good obstacles. You can really use them to split people on long legs, so they have to go around them different ways. Um, so Peter's course is, at the beginning of the course, is he put people over here in this really white open woods. and uh, he used that as a control picking area. And then as they transitioned to the second half of the course in the greener areas, that's where he really hit them with the long legs. Um, and Egypt Mills, the water gap in general, is a good area for setting long legs. So this was that same uh, leg, just the route gadget printout of the different routes people took. And you can see, you know, some really, uh, a lot of people, somehow managed to find a route that was pretty close to the straight line. That's probably, I would think, was the optimal route, you know, somewhere near the straight line on this leg. But other people chose to take advantage of some of these trails to both the right and the left. You know, some people came uh, up to this trail network and around. Um, so, like I said, it's fun to check route gadget after your course courses are finished to see how people actually ran the leg. Uh, this is from a walk um, in the Czech Republic. Um, you see leg 15 to 16. That's a very interesting long leg, a lot of options there. You know, some people I would think on that leg maybe have even come all the way out to this road. And then Actually, this, this was very controversial as well for some of the same reasons uh, Tom was mentioning. There was a map exchange in this course, and 15 was the first leg on this new map, oh, I right? I noticed that. Yeah, there's so, a triangle under there. Yeah. So basically you start, you know, one, two, whatever, but the other part of the course wasn't on your first map. So you get there, you get number 15, and you have no time to actually figure out. So that's a good that, point. there that's, was a lot of controversy there. You'll see another thing over here, which is called a butterfly loop, which 
we haven't typically used those much in local events and uh, world champs and things, they use those to split runners up to avoid following. Um, it's worth considering if you want to put one in for fun sometimes in a local event course. I've never done that. So that's pretty much it.